Hey folks, welcome to the Freakopolis Times, our podcast mostly about stuff related to our comics and game shop, the Freakopolis Geekery. We're Ian, Tyler, and Troy, and we run the shop and talk to people all the time, just like in this podcast. Join us and some occasional guests as we talk comics, games, pop culture, and just about anything else that pops up. Remember, while some of our topics may get a little geeky, they change up pretty often, so hang in there and maybe the next one will be more your style. By the way, this podcast is video enhanced on YouTube and Spotify. Check it out that way if you like visuals with your talk. You never know what might show up. Now, let's do the show. You know what I like? What? I like that even in 70 whatever, when the first Star Wars movies were coming out, but Ben Kenobi was mindful enough to give the sand people a gender neutral pronoun. It's not like you can tell. A sand woman from a sand man. The untrained eye might not be able to. Kenobi knew that was a... What did he call him? Sand people. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's not sand men. No. No, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. If sand man joined the sand people... That'd be a... They could take over the whole galaxy. They'd have a distinct advantage on Tatooine, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how big Sandman would be. Anakin versus Sandman. <sighs> Anakin's done for. Really? Yeah, what's the lightsaber going to do against Sand? Yeah, and you know how he feels about Sand. I was going to say, he'd hate it. He would totally... He would just leave. Yeah, he hates it. He'd get wrecked up. No, exactly. But Unless I think I think that animosity gets, would power his, his rage-fueled force abilities. It gets yeah. in your shorts. <laughs> well, is this... <laughs> <laughs> is this Anakin or Darth Vader? Anakin, prior to becoming, well, you know, Anna Vader. He, he has the title for Palpatine, but he's still, you know, a Jedi. Right. So he's, he's like, the one he's sacking says, the exactly Jedi. Exactly, let's say temple. one moment after he gives the line, I hate Sand, Sandman, the Spider-Man villain, shows up. Don't think, I would say if it was Darth Vader... He would get beat easier by Sandman, but in the end, with that Sith lightning, he'd turn him to glass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think Anakin can do that. I don't know. Anakin can't possess that ability because he's not not true Darth Vader yet. Right. He he hasn't embraced the dark side. That's pretty fair. He doesn't have ultimate power. Right. Sandman. Unlimited. Unlimited unlimited power. power. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Palpatine hadn't taught that to him yet. True enough. Sandman begrudgingly uh, kills people by just going down their throats. That's allowing yourself to be eaten is in fact a rough way to kill people. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You don't think Anakin could force choke himself and prevent Sandman? <laughs> <laughs> so last night was Sunday night. Yeah, and you guys needed to break away from what we were doing for. Roughly nine o'clock, so that you could watch the new season of Game of Thrones, episode two, House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. What did you think? I thought, being optimistic, it was pretty good. I liked it. It set up a lot of things. Mm-hmm. That kind of makes me anxious as to will all of these things have consequences? Yeah. yeah. Will they be able to pull that off? You definitely feel as though. Uh... This is just a single little bit of a much greater story. Is the story still isolated roughly to King's Landing? Or it's beginning to spread out a little, at least. We got our first look at Dragonstone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was about as far as we've seen. <laughs> Prince Damon's been relegated, but that's still a pretty uh, iconic set from the original Game of Thrones run. So nothing that's really... Crazily pushing the boundaries of what we've seen in the no. Westeros or Essos yet. But it definitely has the right feel to it with these characters and stuff. But at the same time, uh, it feels as though it has a much tighter cast mm-hmm. than the original Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones was introducing so many characters every episode. Uh, and with this one, it's like there's seven or eight major players. And we really delve deeply into their ongoings and motivations and stuff. But... Part of the appeal of the setting, I think, is its expansiveness in the amount of stories it provides. 
even if they're just side characters, they always felt like they uh, belonged and, and only added to the depth of the entire story instead of uh, just being quick throwaways, you know? There's very little of that so far. Mm -hmm. So last week, um, I caught the very end of it, and I saw the former 11th Doctor uh, <laughs> fly away on a dragon. Apparently, as he is more prevalently known than, than this current role, because you're not the only one. As of our, our last podcast, I've had a few people come up to me and say, uh, isn't that like... Didn't didn't he play the doctor? Mm, right. <laughs> Multiple people. Yeah, yeah. It's like... well, he's got a very recognizable <laughs> face. So even though he's got that sort of uh, uh, Targaryen features about him, yeah, 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 the Targaryen hairstyle. He fits that, for that. But... His face is still says, you know, oh, that's the eleventh Doctor. I mean, he's a very good actor, no question about it. He's pulling it, you know. He's he's doing it. He's selling the mm -hmm. fact that he's actually a Targaryen. Uh, but it does make you wonder if the eleventh doctor the time lord was a targaryen <laughs> you know i kind of been hating on people comparing them so much because i love the character mm -hmm. but if that were the case i think i might let it slide <laughs> yeah totally right no he's definitely continued to uh, show that charisma in episode two i didn't see anything in particular so far that would cause me to be less optimistic about this series and its ongoings and in fact when they actually featured some close-ups of the dragons and stuff, Ooh. the uh, the CG was more impressive than I thought it would have been originally. Okay. It was really, really crazy looking. Like, these creatures mm -hmm. have some real design put behind them. Yeah, the way they move and stuff is... Someone's pretty inspired. Oh, and the way they sound. Yeah. Daemon's dragon sounds like a freaking dolphin mm -hmm. mixed with something terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah. They have different songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool that they put that much thought into making them distinct, mm -hmm. differentiating between the Targaryens' various... They have ten dragons, don't they? Yeah. We've only seen, like, three. At max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot going on out there. And so they're, they're, they're building layers where the intrigue will happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so they have to first create all of those characters and create the layers to build upon. Yeah. Um, and then they'll start having, oh, people backstab each other. And power <laughs> and that already. It's kind of yeah, setting yeah. up for it already. Yeah. Yeah. By episode two. Yeah. Episode one very much so serves this purpose of, uh, well, I suppose it serves two distinct purposes. One is to show you all these characters in the setting. And the second is to make sure you know uh, rather bluntly sometimes, maybe it's only detractor, that this is directly tied to Game of Thrones. This is A Song of Ice and Fire, and it is a prequel. Do you know that, audience? Now that you do, we can actually get into it, you know? And <laughs> Pretty the, much. The second episode begins to really introduce some of that uh, that intrigue that you're looking for. So did they bring on any new characters? And and do you have any sense of who is the the uh, John Snows or uh... <laughs> Rhaenyra would probably be the closest thing to a John Snow at the moment, but she's kind of a Daenerys too. Yeah, so. obviously yeah, yeah. she looks like a Daenerys. Yeah, right? yeah, she's supposed to be a bit of an analog there, and their struggles are very similar in that Daenerys uh, faces the difficulties of being a queen uh, and a a matriarch, essentially, as in a world filled with men who rule. Uh, and we see uh, Rhaenyra. Yeah. Rhaenyra is uh, struggling with the same concepts, but has kind of been kicked into the position by her father, mm -hmm. uh, which is definitely uh, not enviable. <laughs> True, but, I mean, to some degree, she has some, uh, you know, she, she's got her father, yeah, propelling her, to that role where Daenerys was more taken. She out. clutched that yeah, ambition. She was, yeah, she was yeah. like enslaved. Yeah. Um, but she rose and she never stopped her rise, you yeah. know. Uh, Rhaenyra here may very well be a little more apprehensive, though she obviously has ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, does she want to sit on that throne? You know, only seldom few people do. <laughs> Man, I freaking love uh, Viserys' minis, though. Yeah, those are pretty cool. They show it off a bit in the first and the second episode there, but he has this really immaculately designed recreation of uh, old Valyria, the the capital of 
Yeah, the, the Roman ancient analog world. And, yeah. and this yeah, absurdly powerful empire. And it shows uh, in this miniature model that he has that looks very much so like any other incredibly impressive Warhammer, you know, battle set or, uh, <laughs> or miniature like scene. Tabletop yeah, yeah. size. Yeah, yeah. But it's mid- pretty magnificent. Mid- for a king. It would be truly beautiful for a tabletop, but not unheard of to have something of that kind of grandeur. But man, that set in itself is just like, every time they show it, it's like, oh, I'd love to, <laughs> to right. actually be able to play around with uh, that. I, I <laughs> like, wonder if they do play. Like, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the actors are probably encouraged right, to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he even uh, breaks a little miniature model in the events of the second episode there. And, yeah, I even cringed. I was like, oh man, that thing is so cool. <laughs> 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 you would feel that pain. <laughs> oh yeah. Are they painted up and everything? No, they're, they're like st- marble. Yeah, they're strictly stone, which kind of makes it all the more impressive yeah. because it's such sharp features. But even just that little detail, when they bring it on camera, it's like, Someone spent a long time designing that, you know. That's cool. Now, I haven't seen... Do they have, like, a really wild intro animation for ah, this? Yeah, okay. Here's something that... Uh, yes, they do. And I don't think it quite compares to... No, it doesn't compare. The it, Game of Thrones The one. Game of Thrones map one. No, was so much no, better. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was amazing. Uh, it set the standard, and all of a sudden you saw... Multiple different shows coming out that had these really oh sure extravagant yeah. yeah it stole the show I believe that uh, the original season of Daredevil which kind of had this melting wax effect yeah. mm-hmm. uh, that was like the standard for a while then Game of Thrones yeah. changed things up uh, now House of the Dragon kind of has this uh, rivers and flows of blood theme uh, which I totally get that it is thematically strong the entirety of this being a a kind of house civil war and stuff and the power of blood being so powerful in the setting. Mm. But uh, it does not translate as well as the original intro sort of for Game clockwork. of Clockwork. Yeah, uh, yeah. The design is really striking in the first one and it just doesn't quite land the same. But more notably, they have utterly <laughs> uh, stalled on the, the uh, orchestral front. The music, every track is just taken from Game of Thrones, or oh, maybe really? slightly modified, but it's as though they are utterly reluctant. Even the intro is completely the yeah, same that's true. with the music. Well, I mean, they, they certainly want to evoke some of that fandom, Yeah, and they can use the music to do that, but the, they can't really borrow too much because it's a prequel. So they can only borrow so much against the visuals or the people. Sure. Um, And the score is 10 out of 10. Like, mm -hmm. I get that, but truly no forward movement on that end as far as I've heard. It is like, as I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, that is the dragon theme from Game of Thrones. And they didn't come up with a new one, apparently, you know. And that's cool. Yeah, it's supposed to evoke that same fandom and, and bring out their love once more. And part of that is the score, because it really is beautiful. But uh, it was an interesting observation to be like, and it's exactly the same. (laughs) Yeah. I think probably what I'm most looking forward to in the next episode or two uh, is they've sort of been teasing a large battle uh, Mm -hmm. on the horizon here. I'd love to see their first. Amongst what factions? (laughs) I wasn't trying to get too deep into it. But, well, it's uh, just a tease. I mean, it's not a, no spoilers, but what factions? Uh, uh, the, it seemed to be uh, the Crab Feeders, Pirates, and the Gold Cloaks of Prince Daemon Targaryen uh, are squaring uh, off against each other. Going to be duking it out. Yeah, yeah. posed for what, a big what's battle. What's their problem? Well, <laughs> if you the watched piece? the second episode, it, it would explain it. To yes, you. Uh, <laughs> the. Uh, well, in particular, it seems as though that is a more tenuous situation than you would imagine at first glance, because getting rid of pirates is usually pretty easy, but these ones apparently have backing from the free cities of Essos, which is really a power to be reckoned with. These mm-hmm. Oh, so like privateers. Yeah. In a way, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so uh, the oh, uh, King Viserys and, and his line and power... Uh, have kept their nose out of it because open war with the free cities would be uh, incredibly costly, and there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, allowing pirates off your coast is a uh, show of weakness. So 
Damon's gonna come and uh, make a point. <laughs> I see. I yeah, see. yeah. Uh, there's, of course, a bit more to it, but that's... Uh, the gist. Yeah, the gist of the situation, what you can gather up, and there's uh, a lot of depth to that situation if you dive into those episodes, yeah. Uh, the Crab Theater seems to be uh, quite the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be really interesting to see where they go with that. He's one of those cruel, innocuous little characters that I'm sure will have an interesting twist to them that serves to be small, yet kick off much greater things, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It tends to be the way those stories are told. I unlikely show off some of that Game of Thrones cringeworthy brutality. Yeah, yeah, right? Pirates. Be, yeah, to be frank, that's one of the reasons I really don't watch the show. Mm. Uh, I'm not a big fan of... Uh, uh, visualized brutality and torture, and often that comes into play in that show. So I get it. I get why people do. I mean, uh, some people like that feeling in the pit of their stomach. I'm personally not a fan <laughs> of it. It uh, lends a lot to the setting. Yeah, and uh, that it makes it very tense. You know, uh, the stakes are pretty high because what if that happens to your favorite character? Whatever. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of drama to it. And characters do die in that setting. Uh, swiftly and permanently. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I figured that out when Ned Stark died. Yeah, you practically uh, swore yeah. off the whole IP at that <laughs> point. I pretty it's much like, did. What a waste of a show. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, okay, it's that kind of show. I get it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's not so much for me. However, what House of Dragons pulled us away from is an old classic. That it's true. Its big, meaty claws have sunk themselves into us yet again. Just and like I'm, the crab feeder. Just like the crab feeder himself. <laughs> come to feast on our wallets. That's right. Destiny 2. Destiny 2. Yeah, you know, there's a brand new season. They had a showcase on the 23rd. I watched that showcase like some kind of sucker. <laughs> and they suckered you in. And they suckered me right back in. Now, and in turn, you suckered us in. <laughs> Destiny 2, video game. We play it on the PlayStation. Uh, it's out for everything, though. Right? Yeah, well, uh, but Switch. You everything but Switch. Yeah. Um, for now. <laughs> <laughs> and it, we, it keeps pulling us back. It, it's kind of our World of Warcraft, I guess. And we played World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on release, Classic and Burning Crusade, yeah. But... There is an appeal to the game. In particular, they've figured out a way to release consistent content, you know? There's, they used to really struggle with content droughts, where you'd go months in an expansion with very little, very few updates. Sometimes they wouldn't even do rebalancing updates for like three months. But mm -hmm. under the uh, whip of their suits, <laughs> I am sure they have it much more straightened out because damn do they deliver... A kind of mind-boggling amount of content at a ridiculous pace. Yeah. Every, yeah, I mean, what, six months? Uh, well, they have new seasons every three months. Wow. Major expansions every year. Uh, and a lot of, you know, new dungeons, raids. All that good stuff intermittently sprinkled throughout there. Yeah, yeah, they really have some kind of pace set with their developers. And uh, I know that you don't care much for the story ever, Dad. You told me multiple times that uh, <laughs> it's really just a shooting game to you, but they are able to deliver on tone and dialogue uh, in a way better way than they did when the game first released. It was notorious for being <laughs> off-tone and having no urgency to it or, or any sense of real danger. Mm -hmm. uh, even while terrible things were happening, people were cracking jokes like it was a... Uh, uh, Oh, what's that director? Taika Waititi? Oh, well, Taika Waititi, sure, but <laughs> who's the one that's known for the quips? Did the Avengers? I was just saying, Russo Brothers? Or? No, no, the other Avengers. Joss Whedon. That's Joss funny. Whedon. You can't say good things about Joss Whedon anymore. No. He's been cancel cultured. Well, so long. <laughs> Alongside Ezra Miller and uh, J.K. Rowling? Those uh -huh, three or four perhaps. minutes. 
Secret Council of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Joss Whedon, Ezra Miller, and J.K. Rowling are the new Injustice League. <laughs> yeah. yep. Throw Zack Snyder in there with him. Yeah, plus, yeah. plus Zack Snyder. What would he do to deserve that? Kept the director's cut of Justice League. Ah, that is a <laughs> unforgivable sin right there. For too there. long. No, no, they're all just Crazy. Hollywood douchers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and J.K. Rowling is racist, so. That amidst many, many other bigotries. But, yeah, it kind of had a, uh, the campaigns prior had a, a little bit of a Joss Whedon uh, effect going on with their presentation. And now, you get a lot more of a sense that they're taking their setting much more seriously, even as we enter a season that is (laughs) pirate-themed. This is true. I mean, there's a lot of exposition, and they put a lot of care and detail into it. The writing is extremely good. The voice acting is excellent. Yeah, yeah, they get some real talent. My, My reasoning for why I'm not a huge fan of it is because... Uh, of being a uh, silent protagonist uh-huh. and it's not really to me it's not really an RPG of any kind because you don't make any choices relating to your character all everybody who plays a character in that game makes the same choice um, and so to me some of it seems a little pointless like why do they write all this stuff uh, well you don't play single player games in general Right. No, I don't play single player games. Yeah. So it it's just doesn't appeal to You know, the and they want a setting that they can turn into movies and stuff. That's why they allowed themselves to be bought by Sony. So they need characters that they can put on the screen and and cast. <laughs> right. So yeah, you know, I get that and in fact sometimes I do find their tendency to shove dialogue down your throat a little arduous. Like, it doesn't always need to be a quest objective to listen to something and then immediately another quest objective to listen to someone else. Yeah, yeah. You know? that's That stuff could just be like a little, okay, well, I'll, you know, I get the gist of it. We can move on. But <laughs> most of the time, I do appreciate it for them at least setting up a reason as to why you're here in this world doing these things. Because otherwise, though it is narratively not an RPG mechanically it has always been recepted as one of the best games ever made in movement shooting and now i believe even in you know character setup well uh, clearly it has some advantages we we keep returning to mm-hmm. it and there's there's a lot of reasons for that it it i don't see ever fully breaking away from that game unless somebody comes out with something that tops it that's going to be a challenge that's not going to be easy to do yeah no doubt also, during this presentation, their fungy, weirdly big stage show, uh, which is quite the impressive deal, they put a lot of work into that stuff for sure, just like any other big budget, you know, generally on the same scale that like Sony themselves would show things off. Uh, they put a lot of work into that for sure. But during this stage show, they showed off their next major expansion, Lightfall, uh, which will introduce grappling hooks. <laughs> And new subclasses and a wildly unexpected aesthetic for the game. Right. Well, they're introducing a whole new civilization to sort of the lore (laughs) that uh, we didn't know about. Over the past eight years or so, we've defended the last city. Only to find out... Wait a second. No, there's another city. (laughs) There's another way cooler city. Yeah, right. We could have been there the whole time. Come on, guys. We we didn't tell you about the second to last. (laughs) They're still around. No, for real. And we know you've been looking at the last city for the last eight years, but you've never actually been able to go down there. Except for the... the, Worst part of it. The trash tier of Lixney Quarters. (laughs) But this one, you'll be able to see the cyber life that you never got to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. A really wild kind of neon cyberpunk city uh, that will be the patrol space and the new area of interest for this upcoming story and you know everyone expected and they have nailed in the past kind of the uh, dreary backed into a corner desperate last chance storyline type deal and the title of the expansion is 
Lightfall. So you would think it would be one of those, but instead, it seems to depict this really colorful, bright, unexpected setting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really drew me in. I was with like, oh, I didn't see books. this coming. Yeah, with <laughs> grappling books, too. The movement in that game is, uh, <laughs> I suppose it's incredibly precise and it challenges you in some interesting ways. Mm -hmm. But a grappling hook in a city could be a whole new angle on how to move around. You uh, know? The whole idea of it coming off like Spider-Man uh -huh. seems, I don't know if it belongs in that game. And we really took quite the hiatus from this game. So to return to it means that there's a lot to catch up on as well. A lot of quality of life stuff that they've introduced that we really like. Though the one big one that you've been asking for... <laughs> Pretty much since release of Destiny 2, what, five or so years ago, uh, is loadout yep. and, and quick. Though they've made mods and modifications to your gear and, and weapons and stuff faster to swap out. Uh, loadouts are still absent from the game. However, they promised them in this uh, reveal show. Right. February or next year. Or what? Yeah, yeah. Coming soon. So finally, they'll be able to deliver that much, much requested quality of life improvement. <laughs> For a game that demands and expects you to constantly change your gear Always. into different configurations, to not allow you to save various configurations and reload them is uh, ridiculously short-sighted. Well, we've been enjoying it, so looking forward to what's coming up next for that one. And, uh, yeah... And never quite leave it behind. <laughs>so this this week marks the pre-release of the new Magic the Gathering uh, series called Dominaria. Yeah, Dominaria United. Dominaria United. Yeah, there's a bunch of different things about it. What's what's going on with Dominaria? For one, okay, so it is the original. Magic setting. The original, original magic, magic setting. So, uh, really, it is uh, the first space that they played around with their own IP. Uh, funnily enough, you have, like, Arabian Nights. Well, some How long ago ones. was that? That was, like, 1993 or something. And Dominaria was... Amidst those runs later on, I believe, than the very first, like, five or so initial releases... Uh, but it was the first one that really introduced the idea that magic had its own place. These planes in which uh, the story and the characters existed. And so that has an appeal to people who were there for the original release, I'm sure. Some returning characters and, and uh, very original creatures and spells and stuff that maybe haven't been printed in a long time. But what I continuously hear is the appeal of these jumpstart kits yep everybody's been mentioning the jumpstart kits that you get these two kind of generated decks slam them together and that is a fully playable deck that may very well have some very desirable cards hidden throughout it so yeah you basically you buy what you buy two packs yeah and you you, you push them together to, to create a single deck but maybe each pack has a theme of some kind it going appears on. to be the case though Really, the idea that you could draft a deck uh, in all of about 20 seconds sounds a lot more fun to me than the uh, tearing and passing process that drafts usually entail. 100%. That can be kind of clumsy at times. But... And it's so easy to mess up. Yeah. I mean, almost consistently, someone makes some sort of mistake, and it's no big deal. Like, mm -hmm. everyone just shrugs their shoulders and go, oh, well, but you know that, like... Whoops, you know, this whole thing is a little bit off now. In a normal draft. Yeah, 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 yeah. The passing. Either you accidentally go in the same rotation twice, never go clockwise, counterclockwise, or someone counts their cards and says, oh, I forgot to pick a card, or I picked two on accident, or mm -hmm. something, you know. You keep the entirety of your two packs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You, and you slam them together yeah. uh, to create an entirely new uh, kind of play style between those two decks. And that does sound like a ton of fun. Depending on how many uh, themes of these Jumpstart decks they print, there might be, like, you know, a hundred different combinations mm -hmm. that you can pull off pretty easily. Black, green, and red. Yeah, yeah, um, you know. Exactly. That could be a ton of fun. 
Uh, I'm very hopeful to build one myself and, and see that process and uh, enjoy what that has to offer. So on that end, it's pretty cool. But I've also seen that the set in general, as one of their big releases, uh, includes reprints of some super cool cards uh, and also some new prints, uh, including this new Shivan, uh, Shivan Hunter. Well, we've seen it as a promo card now. Uh, it is a Dragon Hydra with haste. Mm -hmm. uh, they have flying as well, I believe. Yeah. It costs X and a red, and it comes in with X11 counters. So it's as powerful as you make it. It hits that same turn. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the classic uh, Shivan Dragons, but really could be a, uh, a game ender. <laughs> now, is Jumpstart... Uh, it's different than Dominaria, though, right? Dominaria has regular... Set booster packs and that's oh, the Jumpstart decks are part of the Dominaria uh, release, right? But it also has standard draft kits and stuff as well. Uh, so you have to wonder. I suppose they're just trying to appeal to all different types of formats. It's not as though they could deny draft players their their boosters while just printing Jumpstart decks. You know, I'm hopeful though that the pre-release kits have uh, Jumpstart decks in them. I'm gonna actually confirm that myself, but. It would be cool. Well, that I know that cool. there was some kind of a problem with, uh, you know, uh, supply chain issues or shipping what or something. Surprise. <laughs> that, that Jumpstart became somehow detached from the regular uh, Dominaria pre-release. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not sure, even as a store, I'm not fully sure what it is that we're expecting to receive this week. That tends to be the way of the new releases. I always have some sort of hiccup. But there's also one big appealing feature to Dominar United in those collector boosters. In that there's a chance that they slipped in a card from 1993 into those collector boosters. Because they found an unopened treasure trove of them in some warehouse and decided that they would put those in the collector boosters for this set. And that, I mean... Those cards in good shape are $1,000 are cards. Right. You know? The collector boosters have a chance of having an actual 1993 card yeah. included in them. A real piece of magic history. Yeah. Set boosters and collector boosters have a higher chance of receiving, I believe, reprints of cards like that. No doubt. Yeah. So you can end up with, with an actual one from 93, which would be incredibly valuable. Or reprints, which could be pretty cool, but not necessarily a $1,000 card. No, sure. Still totally playable, but yeah, not the ones that you would be selling. Uh, it's enticing, for sure. I've heard a lot of people say, if I could get my hands on even one of those cards, it would be like one of the coolest in my whole collection, you know? No doubt. Yeah. There also appears to be really powerful creatures printed for some classic decks, like uh, some stuff for goblins. And whatnot, and elves, of course, naturally. Uh, stuff that people would have run way back in the day, and still, of course, run today, are going to find themselves bolstered by some really classic reprints and some brand new cards uh, as well. So, in a lot of ways, this set is one of the biggest releases maybe we've ever had while open, and we're super pumped to see those getting cracked into, checking out the pre-release, and uh, getting blown away by some of those brand new cards. Yeah, and what I like about it is it seems to appeal a lot to commander players. Oh yeah, um, which is which is pretty cool. Some of the sets seem to be more aimed at standard um, tournament uh, style, and uh, when you see those come up, you, you get concerned that your commander community might not have that much interest in it. But Dominaria seems to be interesting to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. There's a ton of great stuff to find in there. It seems. I haven't spoiled too much for myself, but I am excited to jump into it. Last week we talked a little bit about the re-release of uh, Spelljammer for 5e. Mm -hmm. uh, it turned out, I think it was actually originally out for uh, version 2 of, oh, uh, really? of Dungeons & Dragons. That yeah. must have been a strange book. <laughs> of course, mm -hmm. I was there at the time playing it, so yeah, you know. But I forgot which what, what it was related to, and it was related to version two. But now with the new release, uh, I was thinking, you know what would be kind of cool is 
Well, you know how we've made a number of different pop culture characters as D and D characters in the past. Yeah, we got quite a little series on that. Yeah, you can see that stuff on our YouTube channel where we made um, the Wolverine. Hulk and Wolverine. And, yeah, 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 a ton of good ones. Yeah, Captain America, Wolverine, Lara and, Croft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, all different types of pop culture. I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to make like. The Guardians of the Galaxy, for instance, uh, <laughs> as uh, Spelljammer guys. Spelljammer know. rules. Oh, so yeah. easy. Peter Quill, Fighter, Drax, Barbarian, Rocket, Artificer, Gamora, Rogue. Boom. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> Mantis and Monk, or, uh... Mantis would be like a sorcerer. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Sorcerer Monk. She does do some awesome kicks. And stuff. She's got yeah. some. She's got some and, moves. And yeah. she's all about like meditation mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, but she does have an innate power. And she's, like, and she's like bald usually, right? Is she, is she bald no. in the? No, no. <laughs> she's super cute. Oh, she, <laughs> she was bald in the comics. She in was. some of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they turned her from a little freaky to super cute. Okay, but what races are they? Obviously, Peter Quill's a uh, human. <laughs> is he though? Maybe he's an Asimar. <laughs> you you well, could do something like that. Son of Ego. Right? He is. Yeah, Ego exactly. Planet, so. So. He's got some divine blood what? in him. Sure, that's in your backstory. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Asimar, I kind of like that. That would be an interesting thing. Also, they can fly do. sometimes. I was going to say, like okay, the boots. Yeah, right. yeah, you, I mean, okay, mechanically, it lends a little bit to his powers, but it is a little bit off, too. It's not like he has wings. I kind of like it. That would be cool. Drax. Uh, barbarian, half orc. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much as close as you can get. Oh, you can't. You can't do that new. Hippo, you can do Goliath. New hippo Goliath. Goliath. Yes. Oh, Goliath. Goliath. Yeah. yeah, yeah good, they're yeah, even yeah. blue skinned and, and they're stuff. bald yeah. and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he is a Goliath just from from Mars. Yeah, yeah that would make perfect sense. No, where is it they come from? <laughs> uh, Jupiter, Saturn, the Titans. Oh, Titan, I believe. Duh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Titan. Then we have uh, Rocket. Rocket. Could be a gnome, but gnome. Or you could just flavor something. I'm sure there's enough homebrewed Rocket. Raccoon people. Yeah, yeah. Races. Or a, uh, what's the uh, rabbit people? Yeah. Hero- Heroines. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Uh, and then uh, Gamora. Gamora. Uh, nice. Half elf. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah, or drow. It could be oh, drow. Yeah. Oh, no, drow. Nebula is a drow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's half drow. I was going to say, she must be half drow. Half drow, yeah, exactly. They're sisters. So. <laughs> That'd be cool. I like it. I like that team. That would also be a pretty good team, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and putting them together in... Uh, Spelljammer could, you know, you could uh, get their ship together and stuff too. Mm-hmm. We yep. really have a pretty, a cool ship. pretty funny party. Maybe we will uh, put the thought into <laughs> that and, and see what we can come up with. Well, then you'd have to turn around. You'd have to make some uh, interesting pop culture enemy teams for them to oh, run into. Yeah, yeah, that's very yeah. true. A gif that is Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you could also do like. Uh, you know, the crew of the Millennium Falcon. I was uh, thinking about that, but Star Wars is so hard to yeah, translate. Yeah, yeah. We did do Darth Vader. We did. Yeah, we did do Darth Vader yeah. already. He's, the, uh, he's been done. Pact of the Blade Warlock, which was pretty cool. I think cool. that's pretty freaking sweet. Yeah, yeah. Definitely had a, a good Sith spin to it. Uh, though it's hard to replicate the entirety of his powers without making him ridiculously strong. But we could put some thought into this and come up with uh, some interesting... Oh, uh, totally. Ideas. Heck yeah. Might be an interesting kind of game to GM. I was going to say, I'd like to keep the pre-cons around and just around a one-shot <laughs> adventure. That's yeah. like, have people dawn on them. that They're actually just playing as the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. No, right? Be quiet, audience. <laughs> if I invite you to a... Uh... Have Mr. Blue Sky playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> If I invite you to an upcoming uh, game that I say has an interesting twist on it, erase this episode. Yeah, it's, from your not mind. This. No. it's not this. It's not this. And that about does it for this one. If you like hanging with us, please subscribe through your favorite podcast directory. Join our Discord and check out our shop, The Frugopolis Geekery. See you next time.